Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and in this video I want to take you with me through the journey that I had when I was trying to flash my RTX 3080 non-TI to try to see if I could get some better hash rate but more importantly more efficiency. Now everybody's always chasing for that higher mega hash or higher hash rate but for me it's more about what's the efficiency. Can I get the efficiency to be much better? And that's what I really focus on. And Recently, you know, there was an article, uh, Crypto Donkey Miner was able to identify that if you have a particular GPU uh, that matches uh, this particular GPU, you could possibly flash a 3090 BIOS onto your 3080 Ti, because that's what a 3080 Ti really is, is a, a cut down variant of a 3090 that didn't meet certain requirements or whatever. Uh, so it's basically a 3090 and you were able to flash this GPU successfully, you could get 110 mega hash and that's quite significant. Um, and Crypto Donkey Miner brought additional content to us prior, uh, showing us how to get from around 70 mega hash up to 91. But there's a key thing that a lot of people are missing. You can't just go and flash whatever GPU you want to your GPU. It doesn't work that way. Uh, he says here, or the article says here, for those that have a Dell RTX 3080 Ti or any other 30, uh, 3080 Ti with a device ID that contains 2204, then you should be able to flash this 3090 BIOS and they have a link here. What's funny is uh, so many people are hitting the website right now to, to either get this BIOS or doing something else. It could be a number of variables that's causing uh, tech power up to go down. Uh, but uh, that yeah, that BIOS, um, if you haven't grabbed it yet, I'm sure it will be uploaded by somebody because even Rabid Mining talked about it in general. But I'm talking about the 3080 non-TI. Why am I bringing this all up to you? Well, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware, and this is kind of to add on to my previous video or my, my other video, talking about being careful when flashing your BIOS, what I do, steps I take, stuff like that. You always want to make, make sure you back up your BIOS. Uh, I do use Hive OS to, to flash my NVIDIA GPUs in a system dedicated for that one GPU, not where it has multiple because PCIDs can be crossed. You could wind up flashing the wrong GPU. It's a, you have to check out that video. But you can see here using Tech Power Up's uh, website, I can find my original BIOS, right? So it's a card that has a dual BIOS switch. It is the EVGA for the Win 3 Ultra RTX 3080 LHR card. And I have no, not only the normal BIOS, but the overclocking BIOS or vice versa. Either way, that's the correct BIOS for my card. But how do I determine what BIOS I can apply to my GPU? Well, not only do I look at the BIOS version, which you can go and look up this number on Google and see if there's any other GPUs that have the similar BIOS version, what have you. But more importantly, the other key indicators is your device ID, as uh, you know, Crypto Donkey Miner pointed out, but the subsystem ID. Because oftentimes when you flash your BIOS, you probably get an error, you know, subsystem ID mismatch or device ID mismatch or something like that. So once you find a card that has the same device ID, your likelihood of flashing that BIOS successfully goes up. Additionally, the, the likelihood of you bricking your GPU goes down if you have a dual BIOS switch on your GPU. If you have a dual BIOS switch, back up both sides and only dedicate one to attempt to flash your GPU. Just in case you do mess it up, you can always go back to the original BIOS by flipping the switch. Uh, but the pros and cons to that are as follows. For example, um, if we go to EVGA Precision X1, you know, when I flashed a BIOS to that Galax GPU, which is actually the BIOS that I was able to successfully flash to, it is an LHR card and everything, matches the same ID, matches everything I need. There is another one that I found, but it's unverified. Uh, but when you flash it, you're gonna lose all your ICX or EVGA perks, right? You're gonna lose the, the maybe the RGB sync that you had set up. You're gonna lose the ICX where you can monitor your VRMs, your memory temps, your GPU temps, all that stuff. So if you don't mind losing those features, then fine. But you're gonna have to make the choice based upon you know what what your, what is your comfort level. A lot of people don't like flashing GPUs, and I perfectly understand that. A lot of people like flashing GPUs because they're willing they're willing to risk it for the biscuit, as they say. But let me play you a quick video there. So first up, um, we can see that this GPU is getting super hot. Now, of course, when I try to record an OBS, uh, it crashes the card, LHR unlock fails, blah 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 blah. But you can see the memory temperature is hitting 104 C. I uh, hit 106 at one point in time. I live in Florida. It's hot. Uh, and you can see right there that I'm sitting around 273 kilo, kilohash per watt. That's what I'm focusing on is to get that number up. 
Um, and you can see that the power draw is 266 watts at 70% power limit. Uh, and then when I drop the power limit to say 62, uh, we average around 230 watts uh, and we get up to 300 kilohash per watt. Obviously, the LHR lock failed again because of OBS. That's that's not it. But sitting around 70, 71 mega hash, 72 if the monitors on my window system are turned off. But at 230 watts, it's still a lot and still keeping me in that 300 kilohash per watt range. However, with the flash BIOS, which I'm going to switch over and add to this video now. All right, so I am sure you can hear it but the fans are kicking up and look at those thermals gpu thermals the gpu core thermals and memory thermals are off the chart now it could be false readings because the sensors on the galaxy and the sensors on the evga card are two different things uh but still the memory junction temperature we already hit 110 multiple times and that is the t junction of these memory do uh, dies or gddr6 and 6x modules even gddr5 and 5x however i was able to get better efficiency i was able to get 434 kilohash per watt because I'm doing the exact same hash rate, if not better, but at a lower power draw. So about 220 watts, I'm able to get the same hash rate, if not better. Obviously, LHR lock failed again because I'm using OBS. And if we drop the power limit to 62, we could do even better. All right, I've been running this for a little bit too long. As you can see, we're getting, we're still very hot, but at clocks lower than what I previously had, 62 power limit, I dropped it to 60. You can see that the core clock wants to stay locked at a certain frequency. If I put it back to zero, it would go up to 1960, even though I have the power limit at 60. But we're getting close to 400 kilohash per watt, depending on the circumstance. And on top of that, let me go ahead and stop this. And on top of that, you know, not only did I lose my ICX, right? So now the thermistors are all jacked up. I'm having to run the fans at max because guess what? I'm missing a third fan because the Galax GPU doesn't have a third fan. It only has two. So I'm having to run the fans at 100%. So we need to turn that back down to auto. We need to cool this thing down. And we need to be very careful because even though we're able to get better efficiency with this BIOS, right? We're able to run uh, a higher hash rate at a lower power draw with this BIOS than we did with the stock EVGA BIOS. We're giving up a lot of features. Those are the pros and cons that you'd have to determine for yourself is this something I want to deal with? Is this something that I want to do? Uh, me personally, this is not something I would run 24-7 stable. I mean, those thermal temperatures are crazy. Now, it could be a number of factors. It could be that the Galax GPU is overvolting the memory, causing the memory junction temperatures to climb as high as they are. We're, we're literally hitting T-junction. 110C is bad for your memory. You should not be at that 24 7 and of course with this bios that's exactly what's happening third fan is not cooling the card so it's getting hotter the gpu core for some reason the reason why it's getting so hot is because unless you do a negative core clock which most of us do in mining um the power limit is not pulling back the core whatsoever it's just going full tilt 1960 megahertz on the core uh full uh, plus 1200 mm and i could even go higher on the memory but because of this bios you know, the thermals are a big concern. It could be overvolting the core. It could be overvolting the memory because the Galax GPU is designed differently. And I'm losing cooling. I'm losing information that I love uh, from EVGA GPUs. And it's just a catch-22. So is this something that you're willing to deal with? Maybe, you know, if you take the 3080 Ti uh, that everybody's talking about, right? If you, if you have a Dell... 38 Ti with that, uh, you know, device ID and you apply this 3090 BIOS to it, you know, what are you giving up? What are you losing? You know, does one of your fans stop working because you got three fans? Does your RGB stop working or you no longer can sync it with your system? Uh, do the thermals rise up? Those are all different factors. Now, I am going to play around with different BIOS and probably come out with another update in the, in the future. So make sure you get subscribed and hit the notification bell. But that's the gist of this video. I just want to show you that it is possible, right? It's not possible right now to flash a full hash rate BIOS onto a non-LHR card or LHR card, excuse me. But there is a way to use other LHR BIOSes to kind of make your card more efficient. You just got to weigh out the pros and cons, the cost of the effect, right? Your higher hash rate, better efficiency, but at the cost of thermals, noise, fans ramping up to 100% or whatever, or having to run at 100% just to keep things in check. 
Uh, but that is why current uh, situation with this 3080, all I'm gonna do is shut it down, flip the switch back to OC, and that's the BIOS that I have. I still have the original BIOS, I can always flash it back, which I probably will do. Uh, but I'm gonna play around with other BIOS to see exactly what happens. Uh, besides that, that's gonna do it for me today in this video. I just wanted to show you that. Um, do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date what's going on with the channel, as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support us and what we do here. If you do flash your 3080 Ti with the 3090 BIOS that uh, Crypto Donkey Miner was talking about, let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to hear. Uh, many people are talking about it. Understandable, just understand the risk, understand the cost and effect, uh, cause and effect and the cost of pros and cons, all that. Just understand that, be careful, be safe, and you all have yourself a wonderful day. Take care.